Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, RockAuto.com, and State Farm. In the 1960s and 70s, the Italians ruled the mid-engine supercar universe. But in 1978, an unlikely name threw their hat into the ring with a car that has since become as exotic and legendary as anything with a horse or bull on the hood. The company was BMW, and the car was the M1. The first and only mid-engine supercar BMW would make until the i8 more than 30 years later. But when you consider everything that went wrong trying to create the M1, it's a miracle it was ever made. In the 1970s, the BMW CSL dominated touring car racing. But after Porsche debuted the 935, BMW saw fewer podiums and decided a new weapon was needed for the racetrack. They conceived a mid-engine bullet that would be both fast and agile enough to blitz the Porsche. But BMW was not in a position to build such a beast. Luckily, they knew who could. BMW turned to the kings of mid-engine sports cars, the Italians and agreed to have Lamborghini build the cars. And BMW, well, they would supply the engine, a 3.5 liter straight six that would later go on to power the first M5. And to design this beautiful body, BMW enlisted the man that many consider to be the greatest car designer in history. That man was Giorgetto Giugiaro, a name attached to some of the most lauded brands in automotive, including Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, and Maserati. Afraid people would mistake it for an Italian import, it's rumored BMW put two badges on the back to eliminate any speculation of who made the car as it went screaming by drivers on the road or the track. So with a brilliant designer in place, a agreement with the masterminds at Lamborghini and Porsche firmly in their crosshairs, the M1 looked poised for success. But then reality set in. And to say the project became a disaster would be an understatement. In order to qualify for racing, BMW had to produce 400 cars for public sale in 24 months. Lamborghini promised to deliver at least two a week, even building seven prototypes. But then Lamborghini hit a rough financial patch, creating massive delays. BMW panicked. As the story goes, several boardroom squabbles resulted in BMW literally breaking into the Lamborghini factory in the middle of the night to take back the prototype M1s, fearing they would go into receivership and be sold for scrap. So with the clock ticking, BMW had to scramble and find vendors who could build the parts and the body and another vendor who could actually put them all together. But by that point, it was too late. The racing rules had changed and the M1 no longer qualified. So suddenly, BMW was left with a race car and no race. Eventually, 453 M1s were built, 399 for public sale and 54 specifically for racing. After so much expense and effort, BMW was determined to get them on the track. So they came up with the perfect solution, invent their own race, the BMW Pro Car Championship. It lasted for just one season in 1979 as a support series for Formula One, with many drivers actually doing both races. In fact, the legendary Nicky Lauda won the Pro Car Championship. And then the FIA racing rules changed again and the M1 did qualify. But by then, BMW was firmly focused on open wheel racing and the M1 faded into history. Which is a shame, because unlike so many other mid-engine supercars of the period, the M1 is as wonderful to drive as it is to look at. In fact, the M1 is arguably the world's first truly sensible, usable European mid-engine exotic. Zero to 60 takes about five and a half seconds, which isn't fast by today's standards, but it was back then. And the 273 horses from the straight six give me just enough oomph to know that I'm in a serious sports car. I've got power at any point in the RPM band. And on the other hand, it's actually very civilized. I can see out clearly, the shifter's nice and easy, the clutch isn't too heavy, I can reach all the dials. This is the kind of car you'd take on a nice lazy road trip up to the Alps. But it's certainly not lazy in the corners. The M1 handles beautifully with outstanding feedback and loads of grip that gives you more and more confidence the faster you go. You settle in quickly and only after a few minutes you feel as though you've been driving it for years. Simply get in, turn the key, and drive. Unfortunately, with fewer than 400 made and less than that even on the road today, the chances of actually getting to experience an M1 like this are becoming increasingly difficult. So if you ever do get the opportunity to see one, let alone drive one, just remember how close we came to never having it at all.